Okay, so move down to where it says objective. So the goal of this activity is that you compare and contrast your content vocabulary for genetics. So, your content vocabulary for genetics are on those cards that I gave you. Okay, each card has a word that you've basically seen before, either in the lecture or when you broke down your definitions. And now some of you may see that as you go through them that you don't fully understand what the word means. So this activity, your goal should be that you dive into that understanding. So that when you're done with this activity, you fully understand each and every word. Okay? So that when you leave today, you leave going, oh, I know what a Punnett square is now. Or you leave today going, okay, I know what heterozygous means now. I heard her say it in the lecture, but I didn't really understand it. Okay? I want to revisit really quick, compare and contrast. To compare something, take two things, compare my right hand to my left hand, what does that mean? Okay, Gustavo knows. I just said compare, but that's good. Compare means how are they the same. My right hand has freckles on it, my left hand has freckles on it, okay? That, how are they the same? Contrast means how are they different. My right hand has two rings on it. My left hand has one ring on it. They're different. They're the same, but they're different. Okay? So that's compare and contrast before you get started. When I created this lesson, my objective was for the students to struggle with their content-specific um, vocabulary, as well as compare, doing that while comparing and contrasting them. Um, this was not the first time they've seen these words. They've already been exposed to them. So this would be more towards the end of the unit. Um, and they're working in pairs. Although you see them in fours, they are actually working in pairs. There are three parts to this activity. The first part, they get all the sets of words and they're given no direction on how to categorize them. They have to come up with the categories on their own. Um, they struggled with this at first. They wanted me to tell them how, what group should I put them in? How many groups do I need? How many words are in each group? And I explained to them that they make the groups. They can have two groups. They could have ten groups as long as they had more than one group and that they had an explanation for the groups that they put the words in. Part B actually uh, dived into the understanding a little bit deeper and they were to they were to randomly draw four words and then they had to pick which word did not belong in the group of four words. Once again, they could pick any word they wanted. It just had, they had to have an explanation for what word did not belong in the group of four. The great thing about this activity or this lesson was that the, it really forced the students to think differently about the words, not just writing a definition in their notebook, that they had to really contemplate what makes this word like another word, what makes this word not like another word. Um, also, the conversations that they had, it really just stunned me that some of them were able to come up with some of the things that they came up with, whereas if I would have just given them, given them the answer, they might have not come up with the creative responses that they had. The worst thing about this activity that I um, had a hard time with was the different, differentiation. There were some groups that really struggled and then there were some groups that really took off. The groups that really struggled, I spent more time with um, and I didn't, uh, I made sure that they didn't have to complete the activity, that it was more about the experience of the activity, which is sort of hard for me because I want to grade things. Are they done or are they not done? And so it forced me as a teacher to adjust grading as more what are they doing or not are they finishing it or not. This lesson was learning with others and not group work because the experience for them was different depending on what their partner would say to them and what they would say to their partner. So the interaction between them actually created a learning experience and a new outcome, whereas if they had a worksheet that they did together, their outcome would be the same. They would just have the same answers for everything. 
but because they had a partner to experience this assignment with and make opinions with, um, the outcome was different, authentic, and as well as learning with others instead of just group um, work. So for part A, we took all the words that fit in one certain category and lined them up and put them together. So for, um, we have four different parts. So like part three, they all went with Punnett squares. So we put those in one. And then part four, they all went with cells. So that was another. And part two, they had numbers and variables. So we put those ones together. And in part one, they were the laws and probability. And I thought those went together. So it's not like. Are we supposed to find out which ones go together? No, we're like, which one doesn't belong with all these ones? Oh, okay. Well, probability and law go together. Um, well, aren't genes with, like, probability and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So, so we take out n equals 23? Yeah, so you circle it, and then it doesn't go together. So, right, it doesn't belong in the group. And then we take these and put them aside, and we do it again. Do you have ten? So just five each? No, just two each. Okay. What about part C? We're not on part C yet. Okay, we have to... We have to do this five more times. So part B, five more times. Okay. So I think it'd be meiosis, because this all has to do with, like... These go together. Scars. Gametes and my meiosis. Mm hmm They do? Yes. Meiosis and gametes. Oh, oops. Um Punnett square doesn't go with those two. Because it doesn't have anything. These two go together though. Okay. Well. Are we gonna circle two? Would we? I don't know. Oh, we had to put the cards in different categories based on what we thought, like where we thought they belonged. So we put all of these words that sounded like they go with Punnett squares in one, and then the ones that go with cells in another, and the ones with the numbers in the fourth, and then the first one was like the laws and probability. So they all go together. Yeah, but I don't know which one doesn't go in the group. Um, can we take out two? Should we? Yeah. Yeah, let's just do that. Punnett square and... Allele. Allele. They didn't go together because those are the laws. Like, these have to do with body cells and this has to do with um, determining traits and stuff. These ones determine traits? Yeah. 